Hello, and welcome to a short tutorial on the use of Ensight with regards to aerodynamic analysis. In this short tutorial, we'll go through the generation of CP graphs. Uh, perhaps when this type of information is not available directly from the solver, we can create these new variables. In addition, I'll go through the creation of a downforce per unit area variable, which allows you to interrogate the model looking at where generation of lift and downforce is taken, is ge being generated. And finally, I'll expand on that and look at spanwise loading. For this example case, we'll start by looking at CP. So we'll select all of the uh, entities in here, and we're going to generate CP. Now in this model, we have P, but it's absolute pressure. So the first thing we can do is we can do uh, P relative. We can use the uh, variable calculator here and type in any function that we'd like. So we can take off the reference pressure. So now we have P relative. Now we can generate something called CP, and this is just P relative divided by one half rho b squared. Okay, now we have a variable. We could, uh, for example, select the all the visible entities, and we could color this by CP, a variable that we just created. So we look in CP at this uh, this particular variable here. We'll move the uh, legend up here. Um, so we can we can look at CP, which is quite uh, quite useful. Uh, the first thing we'll do is try to do a CP graph. So we'll want to interrogate these two entities here. So we can use the P key, and we can see which uh, particular entities there are here. So we see this uh, family eight to nine. So we can select these, and we'll do a section cut. So we'll cut it at y equals negative. 0.01. So we've got a section cut through this uh, entity here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. So now we'd like to create a graph. So we simply go to the graph function here and we'd like to query over a 1D part over distance. We can select the variable that we'd like to query and then the dimension that we'd like to reference it on. We'd like to look at the X from the origin and we can do create. This is created query. We can now pull over to the plot tab and make a new plotter. We can go down to the plot uh, entity down the left hand side and we can move this up to uh, an area here, maybe make it a little bit bigger. We can go through and uh, modify its uh, title here, CP for rear wing. And we can maybe take off the legend we can also change some of the attributes of the graph here. We can go through and add in maybe some additional uh, lines here. You can control the font and the size and the min and the max and the labels and so forth for each one of these here. We'll say XA location. Okay, so now we have a nice little CP graph for that section cut. And it's very easy to now go through to our um, clip plane function here and say that we'd like to take this clip plane and create data. Let's do 30 section cuts, and this is our starting location. And we can go through and change the section cut now to be towards the end. And we can and create stop. Now we could uh, add in an additional label here. I'll show you a little quick easy way of adding an annotation as to where this section cut is. So we could say we'd like a new section cut, a new label, sorry, section cut at ya equals and then we can give the part value for the clip plane with a format I'll make it a bit smaller here Okay, now we've created our uh, label here, and we've created our section cut. We've defined our min and max on our flipbook, and we can just hit load. So now we have a section cut label updating, CP graph updating, and creating the flipbook. Now we have this value that we can dynamically uh, still move the graph around and query, uh, and look at our CP development as we go across the wing. 
So that's the first uh, instance. The, the second thing we'll do is we'll look at creating a new variable called downforce. Uh, this will give you uh, an indication of where um, lift and downforce is being generated. At the moment, you can look at this and say, okay, I have uh, positive pressure here, um, but I need to recognize that if it's an upward pointing surface, it is lift, um, and if it's a downward pointing surface, then it's downforce. So uh, areas that are maybe not uh, so indicative of whether this is lift or downforce, or is this lift or downforce. So what we'll do is we'll go back through and we're going to create the downforce variable. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select the entities on which we'd like to calculate this variable for, and we'll do this by calculating the normal first. So we'll calculate the normal on these surfaces. Okay. Now that's an elemental value. See here, this is an elemental value, and we actually need nodal values. All of our other values are nodal. So we'll use the element to node conversion here. And we can retype this as uh, normal nodal. And the part selected, and we'd actually like to select normal. Okay, so we can go back through and uh, go to our creation of a variable, we'll call this downforce. And we can define this equation as P relative multiplied by the normal nodal in the Z direction. So we've taken only the Z component of the normal, multiplied it by its pressure, and we're going to multiply this by minus 1 so that uh, positive values are downforce and low values are lift. Okay, so we have a new variable and we can go through and color by that variable now. Okay, so the first thing we'll want to do with these palettes is that we'll make our range a little bit smaller here. We'll call this minus well, oops, minus 1e3 to 1e3. Okay. Next thing we'll do, we'll make an odd number of colors. And that really means so that we can now center our values. So we have 21 colors and we want to edit value 11, for example, and we'll say we'd like to make him white. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the values in the middle white as those values near zero are of no interest. So we'll make three color bands on either side of the middle, zero. So you can see now we have the warm colors are positive and the um, uh, colder colors are negative. So now we'll go back through and we can turn this plot off here. And we can turn this uh, annotation off as well. And we'll look at this uh, value here. We'll bring this scale up so you can see it a bit better. So what we have here is indications where cold colors are generating lift and uh, warmer colors generating downforce. So this particular value here, we had positive pressure on an upward pointing surface. We actually have generated downforce. So we're generating downforce on the front splitter. We're also generating downforce on the lower side of the splitter. So whereas previously we would have had a positive pressure here and a negative pressure on the other side. Um, showing us different colors. In reality what we've done now is we've been able to create those as the same colors. So we're looking at one constant band of downforce. So you can see even for the rear wing we have uh, red on the upper surface and lower surface of the wing indicating that both surfaces are generating downforce. So this is a nice way of interrogating the model for downforce.